everyone, welcome back to Tea with MD. I'm Dr. Joyce Park, a board certified dermatologist, and today we're reacting to some amazing minoxidil success stories. In case you're not familiar, minoxidil, which comes in topical or oral form, is a medication that can help stimulate hair growth and slow down hair loss. It's one of the most well-studied treatments we have for both men and women dealing with thinning hair, and I am recommending it to patients, friends, family alike all the time. I love seeing real results and breaking down what's actually happening behind the scenes. So this should be a lot of fun. If you're new here, I already have a full video all about minoxidil, how it works, who it's for, and what to expect. So definitely check that out right here. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you want more content on all things hair, nails, and skin. Okay, let's get into it. Oh my, oh my God. That is an incredible transformation. I have to watch that. That is, that was so cool. Wow. Okay, so important thing to know here. I mean, first of all, I gotta give her props because that is incredible. And I can really see as a dermatologist that she was consistent with her treatment. Because here's the thing, growing hair takes time and consistency. And one of the most common things I see with my patients who use minoxidil is that they stop using it every day. And I get it, it's not always the easiest medication to use. It can make your scalp itchy. Some people don't like how it makes their hair and scalp feel oily or greasy. But the thing is, it's really important to stick to your routine because if you veer from that, then you're not going to see results. And also, another thing I tell my patients is don't expect to see new baby hairs until about at least four to six months of consistent usage. Growing hair really takes time. And so I have some patients who start using the minoxidil for a month. They say, hey, I don't see anything and they give up. Well, one month is not long enough to actually start growing new hairs. The other thing people say to me a lot when they first start is, oh my gosh, Dr. Park, so many of my hairs are shedding. This is also very common. This is what I call the minoxidil dread shed. That happens in the initial period when you first start using minoxidil and it's actually a sign that it's working. So as you apply the minoxidil, you'll see some of the weaker hairs that are in the telogen shedding phase start to come out. And this is actually a good sign because it means that those hairs need to come out in order for new baby hairs to grow out from underneath and they're pushing all those old hairs out. So don't fret. I know it can be alarming when you're already dealing with hair loss, but just stick through it. But I am so impressed seeing this transformation because I can really tell that this creator was very, very consistent with her treatment and it really paid off. That's incredible. Video number two, let's watch. Oh. Okay, to her, I say, you are clearly very committed to your hair to the point where you're willing to give up having a pet. And I hear you. I hear you on this because minoxidil can actually be toxic to pets, especially dogs and cats too. And it's usually from them ingesting the minoxidil. And so if you're someone who sleeps with your pets in your bed, where the pets are on your pillows, they're licking your pillowcases, they could potentially be licking your head or your scalp, where the minoxidil is applied or your hands, if you don't wash your hands after using minoxidil, then yes, you should definitely be concerned. However, I do have many patients who have pets and are still able to use topical minoxidil. So here are a couple precautions that you can take when using minoxidil if you have pets at home. So the first one is to keep the minoxidil behind a cabinet door. So in your bathroom cabinet, keep it behind a door that the pets can't open. Apply the minoxidil in an area where the pets cannot reach or come into contact with. So for example, apply the minoxidil in your bathroom. And if you're applying the minoxidil at night and going into your bed, then keeping the pet out of your bedroom would be a very smart step as well. Always, always wash your hands before using the minoxidil and wash your hands thoroughly after using the minoxidil. This isn't only beneficial for your pets, but also for yourself. So you're not, you know, rubbing your eyes and getting it into other areas or accidentally ingesting it or whatever. However, if you say, Dr. Park, I just 
cannot be without my pet. They are in my bed. They are able to lick it off of my head. Then I would say, well, could you maybe try applying the topical minoxidil just during the daytime so that the pets would not be able to access or potentially be in an area where they could lick the minoxidil. Or if you say, I absolutely cannot take the risk, then you might be a candidate for oral minoxidil, which I think we'll cover in another part of this video. So it's not the end if you have a pet. You can still figure out how to use topical Rogaine or topical minoxidil. You just have to take some extra precautions. I also want to point out that it's very smart that she's using a toothbrush or some type of applicator to get the minoxidil into her scalp. Because another common mistake I see people make is getting the minoxidil only on the hair, but you actually need it to go into your scalp. And so using some sort of device or tool that helps you more easily get it right into where it needs to go can be very effective. Video number three. <gasps> oh wait. Oh my gosh. Wait, her brows, they're so thick now. I mean, to be honest, she kind of had really nicely shaped thick brows to begin with, but I could see they were a tiny bit sparse in the middle, but they really filled out after minoxidil. So this creator is showing how she uses a spoolie to apply the minoxidil. And I love this video because it showcases that you can use minoxidil on areas, not just on your scalp, but you can also use it on your brow. You can also use it on your beard if you're trying to grow back your beard. And if you're dealing with just specific areas where you're experiencing balding, you can use it as a spot treatment in those areas too. She's also using a spoolie to get it on her brows, which I think is a really neat hack. I mentioned a little bit about using tools to get the minoxidil right where you want it to go. So this is a useful way to get it onto your brow. That's pretty cool. Okay, video number four, I think. wonder how long this time lapse is gonna go. Okay, so four weeks. I think that four weeks is too soon to see any difference. However, I like that she's being consistent with it and I like that she's using a derma roller. So let's talk a little bit about a derma roller. Okay, so if you're not familiar, a derma roller is a handheld device like this one with fine micro needles that create these small controlled punctures or zones of injury in the scalp. Those micro injuries then stimulate the scalp's natural healing response and can also enhance the effectiveness and the penetration of topical treatments like minoxidil. I would limit use of this to one to two times a week in order to allow for adequate healing between sessions. That said, there are some important precautions that you can consider if you want to use a derma roller like this at home. So number one, always make sure you're using a clean, sterilized derma roller. I like to spray mine with alcohol in order to clean it both before and after use. Avoid rolling over irritated, broken, or infected skin. And then I always caution after derma rolling, I would wait 24 hours before applying retinoid or minoxidil, just in case of extra irritation. Choose the correct needle length, typically 0.25 to 0.5 millimeters for home use. You don't wanna to go too short because it won't be effective and you don't wanna to go too long where it will be too invasive. So combining derma rolling with minoxidil can work beautifully. You'll start to see those baby hairs along the hairline and it can really give you a fuller, more denser appearance. Okay, let's watch the last video three month progress. She's on two and a half milligrams of oral minoxidil. Brows and lashes are looking long. Oh, and I like the baby hairs. You can see all the little sprouted hairs. I wish she had a before photo. But anyways, I like that this creator is showing her journey on oral minoxidil. So oral minoxidil is a very powerful way to grow back hair. It truly is. And I prescribe it to my patients who either are not seeing any benefits from topical minoxidil, they may be topical minoxidil non-responders, or their hair loss is so severe that they really need a bigger gun to come on in and really jumpstart those follicles. Oral minoxidil carries with it side effects. And these side effects are more severe 
severe and more common than when using topical minoxidil. Some of those side effects include hypertrichosis, which is extra unwanted hair growth. So the extra hair growth is so extra that some of my female patients actually have to end up shaving the sides of their face because they start growing a lot of long sideburns, which they don't necessarily want. And they notice more leg hair, arm hair, they can get hair, more hair all over their bodies. So that's number one. It can also make you lightheaded. Oral minoxidil is FDA approved as a blood pressure medication. And so as you can imagine, people with normal to even slightly low blood pressure taking it will experience dizziness, lightheadedness, even some other symptoms of low blood pressure. You can also see fluid retention or edema, especially around the lower legs. And then a very rare but dangerous side effect is a pericardial effusion, which is a fluid collection around the heart. And that is a more serious side effect, obviously, which would be a contraindication for you to ever take this medication. As with anything, you should talk to your doctor to see if you are a good candidate for this medication. And if you're really struggling with hair loss and topicals don't quite seem to cut it, then oral minoxidil might be your next step. It does work very well. It's very effective, but again, side effects. All right, I hope you enjoyed watching these hair transformations. I know I really did. It always gives me a lot of hope when I see these success stories and I like showing them to my patients too because oftentimes you really have to trust the process and continue being consistent with all the treatments even when you feel like you're not seeing that much change. So I just wanna let you know to help encourage you guys that consistency really is key and there are these success stories and hopefully you will also be a success story as well. Have you seen any other successful hair transformations or do you just have burning questions about hair loss or hair care in general? Make sure to leave all those questions and comments below and don't forget to hit subscribe because we have a lot of new content coming out for you soon. Until next time.